one of the things that when I sign a book for somebody, one of the things I write in there is be intentional, be bold. You have to act on faith because there's not going to be a direct line from making the right people decisions to the bottom line the first day. It's not going to be a direct line to exponential growth. But let me tell you something, if you grow a team of people that have a strong sense of belonging, they will run through the wall and you will have exponential growth and you will have uh, profitability. Alan has started and grown several multi-million dollar businesses. His mission is to help you do the same. Welcome to the Business Growth Pod, building the future one entrepreneur at a time. Hey everyone, welcome to the Business Growth Pod. I am your host, Alan Draper. So thankful that you are with me today. I know you have a lot of options and I know you're busy individual. So thank you for tuning in. Today, I would like to welcome to the show, Joey Havens. Joey is a CPA and is currently a partner at Horn, where he passionately lives out his life's calling to help others see and reach their full potential. Joey challenges leaders to bold transparency, calling on leaders to show their heart while working to connect everyone to the why or the purpose of the organization. His new book is titled Leading with Significance, How to Create a Magnetic People-First Culture. Welcome to the show, Joey. Glad to have you. Oh, Alan, thank you so much. I'm uh, tickled to have to be here with you today. So, you know, I what's interesting is, you know, I'm I'm an entrepreneur over the years. I've started probably 15 companies on my own and I currently own 29 companies. A lot of them um, I did not start. I came in a, a little later. But when I started our first company, which was a pest control company, you know, I I had this this concept of what a company culture was. But to be honest with you, it fell by the wayside a little bit. And it's simply because when you're starting a company, there's so many things that you have to be doing. And we started from scratch. And I actually moved from Phoenix to Detroit to start the company. So I had to learn that that market as well. What is something that people who are just getting started, what can they do to get some things, some core values, a mission statement, some of these core principles in place, while at the same time, just trying to hustle and keep the lights on? Yeah, that's that's a, a great, great question because it's entrepreneurs and startups are, are dealing with that on a every hour basis, not an every day basis, but an mm-hmm. every hour basis. And having served so many entrepreneurs over the years, as well as helped our company start a number of different businesses, I can relate to, to all of that. But I think for entrepreneurs, a lot of times it's, you know, this creative idea that I believe I can I can make work and it it has less of a, a vision around it. It's just the idea and trying to implement that idea. And what I would encourage people to do is to step back and just reflect for a little bit about, okay, if this idea is has a business purpose, if it is successful, what is the big picture? What is my purpose? in starting this company and realizing that if you're successful, you're going to be attracting and asking people to ride with you along on that ride. And they need to understand what is the big picture. You know, and I, I think that there's so much now that I'm, you know, a decade down the road in terms of entrepreneurship, I think there's so many tangible benefits to having your purpose and your ultimate goals in place early. I always say that if if you if you start a business for the right reasons and with your purpose focused, 
the money will eventually come. But if you start a business just to make money and you don't have those core tenants, the the purpose may not come, right? And um, a lot of people do that, Joey. A lot of people, they, you know, and even me to some degree where it's like, you know, no, we're going to get to that. We're going to talk about that stuff, you know, years down the road, once we have enough money and it, you know, it, it's difficult to get there. But I think, you know, some of the most successful companies that operate at the highest levels, they are, they've figured this out that I'm going, when, when I lead with my purpose and I'm a huge Simon Sinek fan, and I think there's a lot that goes into that, right? Starting with why, you know, his uh, viral YouTube, uh, the golden circle and things like that. But there are so many tangible benefits. For, for example, one of my companies, we tell people to review our core values in the initial screening call before their first interview. And that first interview, what we're really trying to do, we're not necessarily trying to match up their experience with what we need. We're trying to match up their values with our values because we feel like if their values match and they're a good individual, everything else, we'll we'll find somewhere to use them. Have you noticed that in your vast experience? Have you noticed that there are actual real life tangible and even financial benefits for a company to have their culture and their purpose in place as they're growing it. Yeah, it, it's a huge benefit. It's and it's it's more than just the money or success. It's the the joy and the peace and just the comfort from growing a company and making decisions that are based on your own personal values that are so important in a group of people. Uh, doing that together is even even better. I, I tell people this all the time. We have two choices in life. We can choose to chase success, which is all about me. It's about more, 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 more money, more power, more titles, whatever. Or we can choose to uh, live a life of significance, lead with significance, where we first are serving others. We're impacting others. We're trying to make decisions that elevate others. And with that comes joy, happiness, long lasting business models. And remember this, if you lead with significance, if you impact others, if you make that choice, success will always follow you. The numbers will be there. The growth will be there. The success will be there. But if you chase success, you will not always have significance. And quite frankly, some of the most unhappy people I've ever met in my life are entrepreneurs that have completely chased success from day one. You actually just said it much better than I was trying to with this idea that if you if you lead with significance, you will have success. But if you start with that focus on success, you may not end up with significance. And, and most times you will not. Significance does not follow success. And, you know, I'm a Simon Sinek fan also. And any entrepreneur out there should read his book, The Infinite Game. The Infinite Game is golden for somebody that is starting a business or wants to do something bigger than themselves. I think it's interesting that you mentioned happiness because, and there's different terms, right? There's, there's joy, fulfillment, there's different ways to kind of get to that general idea. But I think at the end of the day, that's what we're all after, even though we're chasing it via different vehicles, right? But we're all after this concept of, of happiness. and. Even though, you know, for me, for example, I know that happiness requires sacrifice. So it's not happiness for the first little bit. I cold plunge. When I first get into that water before my body actually goes numb, it, I'm, happiness is not the, the word that I'm, you know, I would use to describe that. But when I get out 
And I feel like, okay, man, if I can jump into some cold water first thing in the morning, there's not a lot I can't handle. It leads me to this idea of long-term happiness. And that's why I think your your book is, is interesting, right? This idea of leading with significance, something that I've preached for years because of what you just said. If you lead with significance, the success will come. If you try to just chase the success without the significance, it probably won't. What are some things without, you know, pulling back the curtain too much, what are some things in your book? What are some ideas that you offer or some some principles that you offer that help with this mindset of how an entrepreneur or business owner can lead with significance? Let me say this. I'm an open book. I've got you know, no secrets and there's no uh, rocket science in my book. It's, it is about people and the emotions that are involved in business and, and making decisions around that. So, you know, some of the things that I really stress is that if you're, if you're serious about having a business that is more than trying to be a money machine, and, and again, I believe this, that if you invest in people, you, the, there'll be more than enough profits there, more than mm-hmm. enough profits to go around. But the point is, the, the first thing that you have to do is you have to be intentional. You have to quit talking about it and do things. So one of the things that when I sign a book for somebody, one of the things I write in there is be intentional, be bold. You have to act on faith because there's not going to be a direct line from making the right people decisions to the bottom line the first day. It's not going to be a direct line to exponential growth. But let me tell you something. If you grow a team of people that have a strong sense of belonging, they will run through the wall and you will have exponential growth and you will have uh, profitability. You know, I I think a lot of, especially early business owners, you you mentioned the importance of of good people. I think a lot of early business owners, and even some that are progressed in their career, they they try to um, cut corners when it comes to offerings to good people, and and I've struggled with this. I remember a couple of years ago, I had a fantastic just standout manager in one of our companies come to us and and ask for a significant raise, ding near double the annual salary, and and we fought it. And I'm and I'm not I'm not going to say that that's appropriate in all circumstances. That just saying yes, you know, obviously you you have to get the finances right of your business model, and and those things have to work out. But you also have to go through this analysis of what is the replacement cost. And early in my career, Joy, I used to think that, oh, I'll just find someone better. I talk a lot about how, you know, the grass is greener for a lot of employees, but it works for the the owners, the people managing the business too. They think, oh, okay, this person's worked here a year. They're, I, I thought they were going to be ABC and they have these deficiencies or whatever. And, and we feel like we're going to be, easy, you know, find a way to replace them very easily. And it's just not the case. And so when they're going through this analysis, when you have a really good person, you try to do whatever you can to keep those people. The inverse of that, Joey, I had a, I hired a, a manager that was a terrible culture. He, I'm terrible for our culture. And the, the harm that, that that individual caused was so significant. It, it is one of the biggest mistakes that I've ever made. And do you have any ideas when it comes to One, attracting and recruiting top people. And then on the other side, just just keeping the people that you have. Is there something in the culture itself that helps you keep those types of people? Oh, absolutely. And there's a lot of science around this too, but people are looking for meaning and purpose. And really, when you drill down into that, you can define that as they want to work with people and for people that care about them and their mm. their success. So the real key to that is leaders being intentional enough, be intentional to connect, to mm. understand 
you know, Alan, what are your aspirations? What are your family commitments? What, what are, what are your dreams? Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, raising a family and being there for the kids, those kind of things are extremely important. And so me connecting with you as a leader, mm-hmm. you automatically are more bought in because you know I care about your success, your daughter, whatever. Mm-hmm. You know that. And the other piece to this that's really big today is flexibility. And I'm going to turn that word to a word that scares some owners, and that's autonomy. Hmm. Leaders have to trust people. People want to be successful. They want to meet expectations, but they also today are going to need and demand, and they're going to migrate to those companies that give them some input into where, when, and how they work. Not Hmm. just where, not just from home, but where, when, and how. Hmm. And when they have input to that, doesn't mean they get to set the rules. You get to set the guardrails. They have to produce. But getting that mindset of excellence anywhere. In other words, our company can succeed and be excellent anywhere. Sure, there's jobs and roles where people have to be there at certain hours and in place. But there are ways to flex around that and to to give them more input into whether they have elder care or young kindergarten uh, uh, graduation, whatever it is. Flexibility is number one. Once a leader connects, then it's all about flexibility. Hmm. I, I read this study that they did in England about this idea of flexibility and they found that that like top level highly qualified just great personnel they're willing to to be paid less for more flexibility for more control over when where how they work and and you know what's really hard i had this there was an owner of a gym that came up to me and they they were talking about how they're starting to work on this process of replacing themselves as the man the GMs right the owners were looking for a, a GM and she kept saying that she hasn't found somebody that is ready for it and I told her that it's probably not the individuals that are ready for the position but her that's ready to let go of some of that control it's hard it's hard for us because these are our you know our businesses are our children in a way this is where we we've, we've put our blood sweat and tears but what you're saying is absolute truth you don't hire somebody if you're just going to be stepping over them all the time doing their job showing you know showing them the quote unquote right way to do it if you do it if if you do it that way one of the two of you is is not needed and so that's such a great principle and and i think you're going, as you mentioned, you're just going to get a lot more quality out of individuals if you give them that flexibility. And I would say it with this, Joe, and I want to get your thoughts on this. That includes those first, you know, two, three, six, 12 months where they're still learning the ropes, where they're where they're learning about your company and, and even about themselves and allowing them to make mistakes. Would you agree with that where You still need to give them that autonomy. And maybe that's even the most important time to back them up is when they make a mistake that was, you know, their idea. And maybe you thought that they should have gone a different direction. Absolutely. People understanding that they can can make a mistake and learn from it and you're going to support them and encourage them in that is a game changer. And the reason it's such a big game changer today, even if you're starting a small business, Mm -hmm. we live in an exponential world. So whatever business you're starting, whatever you're doing, it's going to change more in the next two years than it has in the the first two years that you had the business. And so that means that we need to think more about experimenting and changing things faster and so not all of that is going to work. So you need people that have a strong sense of belonging. They'll take risks. They'll learn. I call it learn fast, learn forward, learn together. And that is going to be the resilience you need 
moving forward in this exponential world that we have. 100%. Well, as we're wrapping up here, Joey, you know, I just wanted to thank you for your time. This is such an important principle. I think if you get this right, I think if you you get your culture right and you lead with significance and and that's you know, we we use our core values and our purpose like I mentioned when we're hiring people. We use it during our annual reviews. We use it when we're requesting feedback from them. We use it if there's any issue, there's any ongoing training. We, you know, we use it during promotion. We use it doing during conferences and company meetings. I feel like it's something that you can't just hang a picture on the wall that says what your core values are, that you have to talk about it and you have to kind of put put your money where your mouth is, um, so to speak. And but it will pay pay dividends. I'm really excited about your book. I'm going to need I, I need to read it and I'll, I'll definitely post about it on my social media. Where can people go to learn more about what you're doing, Joey? and and find that book oh thank you very much it actually goes out on retail in one week june 6th so it'll be out there you can order it on amazon right now but you want to know more about me and what i'm doing i'm at joeyhavens.com and you can email me at joey at joeyhavens.com so um, any of those amazon it will be in a lot of the retail stores uh, also awesome Well, thanks for so much for joining us today, Joey. Wish you nothing but the best. Pleasure, Alan. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you. If you've enjoyed today's podcast, please leave us a rating. And for daily inspiration and business tips, follow Alan on Instagram. Until next time, remember, we build the future one entrepreneur at a time.